This is the first time we choose to be part of Europe and European Union, and uh, this is a religion for us. Good evening, everybody. A very warm welcome to everybody here in the Bali and also the people watching at home by internet um, on live stream. My name is Jure Albrecht. I'm director of the Bali and I will enter into conversation tonight for about an hour with a very, very special guest tonight, uh, the Prime Minister of Albania, Mr. Edi Rama. Thank you very much for coming here and a very warm welcome to you as well, of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, Mr. Edi Rama is, uh, among other things, in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, I think, to talk about uh, Europe and the enlargement of Europe, and that's what we agreed to have a conversation on uh, uh, what Europe could bring to Albania and what Albania could bring to Europe and what's happening at this moment on our continent. Um, I think it's extraordinary that a sitting prime minister actually agrees to have a hour-long conversation on topics we uh, didn't communicate uh, in detail, uh, and I think that's very uh, uh, commendable for uh, somebody who's uh, been Prime Minister from um, actually 2013 onwards, has been in politics for over 20 years, way over 20 years, Minister of Culture from 1989 onward, Culture, Youth and Sports, uh, Mayor of Tirana three times, uh, Leader of the Opposition from 2005 to 2013, and then in power from 2013 onwards. I think it's extraordinary that somebody who's actually so much at stake, because Europe is going through an intense phase, we have a war, uh, a continuous war at the East, um, there's many, uh, there's talk about enlargement for the first time in, in, in years. Uh, I think it's extraordinary that uh, you actually agreed to come here and I recommend you for it. And a warm, warm applause to Mr. Edi Rama, please. <laughs> yes, uh, welcome. Um, let me f maybe first start a little bit to introduce you to also the Dutch public um, and to the public here, but uh, the public at large as well. Um, because uh, this might be known or not known, uh, you weren't always a politician. You have a long career in politics, as I just <laughs> pointed out. But you started out, actually, your father was a sculptor. You, were, you are a painter. You started out as an artist, isn't it? So thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I hope I'm still not a politician, I hope. Um, but of course, uh, it's now, as you said, a bit more than 20 years that I'm in daily politics. So uh, for sure I have been infected. Uh, yes, I uh, have done art since three years old and my life has been always connected to painting, to art. I have thought that when I decided to enter politics, this was over, but in fact was not. So colors came back, came back on my office table and I continued to do a certain, a certain form of, of art, which is being, uh, interestingly enough, more appreciated than what I did before. So, uh, but this is another, this is a complex subject. So, uh, some people would say that this is just because I'm prime minister. Because, because you're in power and they can't. Yeah, tell you. because I'm in power and. Uh, they can't tell you it's not, that they don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember I, I, I had this question once to, to someone that uh, uh, is um, an undoubt on doubtful, uh, um, serious uh, source of information, mm -hmm. uh, Marianne Goodman, the uh, queen of uh, uh, art scene in New York, and not only New York, to whom I said, why you want to have my exhibition? Because I'm prime minister or because you like my art? Mm -hmm. And she said, George Bush is, uh, was our president. I would never have his exhibition. 
So uh, it's uh, it's both. I think it's both. Yeah. Yeah. So both sides have their own good reasons. But what's also interesting, of course, is um, uh, how it's appreciated, absolutely, but also um, why you still feel the need to do it and make it. Um, what, what, what you try to do, try to express with it. Because whether other people think it's art, it's important, but whether you think it's art, and what's the function for you, personally? It all started not to be art, frankly. It started simply because uh, I was not used to meetings. And uh, when I became Minister of Culture uh, out of the blue, I had to go in government meetings. And uh, government meetings were were torturing experience, uh, hours and hours, and yeah. uh, this pile of papers in front. And I was just all the time drawing. And uh, my colleague, the Minister of Education, was on my right side. After every meeting, he would say, can I take it? I said, OK, take it. And one day, I went to visit him and uh, for some issues. And before leaving, he said to me, wait a minute, do you want to see my art collection? I said, you have, you have art collection? He said, yes. And he showed me my drawings in a portfolio. And they looked, they looked OK. They looked good. Mm -hmm. And I felt uh, robbed. <laughs> so I went back to my office and I said to my assistants, this guy has robbed me. He was under some, some accusations at that time, like everyone in Albania, frankly. But I felt the accusations were right because uh, he, he robbed me. And then she said, no, you have much more than that, you know. And then she showed me uh, how many drawings she had collected from my desk. Mm -hmm. So I was doing it uh, as, a, as a matter of sanity, you know, uh -huh. keeping my sanity mm -hmm. while dealing with uh, office things. And then this went out, it's a, it's a long story, but it ended to be, you know, a second phase of my artistic life. But I imagine your father being a sculptor, that probably was a rather odd or weird or maybe a, a, a path of career in the Albania of Enver Hoxha. No, it was not odd. My father was a communist. Uh, he, he was a communist. He believed in communism. He, he was an official artist, mm -hmm. official sculpture. He was engaged... Uh, in a lot of uh, uh, art works in the public space, right. mon monuments, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. we call them. And uh, no, it, it was his thing. Uh, then uh, this, uh, this was a, a reason, let's say, to, to uh, start and have our fights. We had a very, very intense relation, strong, real, and uh, with a lot of tension. And I owe to him uh, who I am because he was, at the end, a liberal father. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to impose uh, his views. He didn't want to impose his uh, ideology, way of thinking. Oh. And uh, it helped me grow in a in a different way, so it's... Yeah. And actually, uh, you became an artist, maybe because of him, or...? Maybe I... M yeah, maybe because of him, I, I somehow uh, grew up in a space with the, all the ingredients, but also because of him, I became the contrary of him. Mm -hmm. In terms of what, uh, what, what I believed and what I, what I did, because of the... Eternal fight, you know, father and son, son and father. So, uh, mm -hmm. so you became a democrat and a liberal and not a communist. <sighs> yeah, I. So you're a social democrat, but I don't know exactly. Uh, but <laughs> it's uh, interesting. If you I don't know exactly, no, it's, it's complicated nowadays to to categorize, you know, yeah. yourself. Oh, that's right. Uh, but. Um, I think I, I became a very eager person for my own freedom. And by the way, talking about freedom, uh -huh. uh, I always remember 
uh, my first uh, my first landing in Amsterdam. Uh, I was involved in the anti-regime movement, which uh, practically had uh, its uh, its first uh, its first uh, um, let's say uh, source of uh, rebellion in the Academy of Arts. And then when uh, the anti-regime movement succeeded, I didn't want to do politics. I just wanted to do my art and I wanted to enjoy the freedom I so much longed for. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, the first, in the first years, I was uh, selling paintings, buying tickets and flying to different countries to see the world. Uh, and I came to Amsterdam and I remember calling home, which was not something I was good in doing regularly, uh, calling my parents. From a cell, from a cell, from, from a, you know, from a telephone in the street yeah. here. Yeah. It was 90, 92, I guess. Or right. 90, yeah. 90, yeah. Should there have been, still, still telephone been 92 boots. or 93, yeah. yeah. And I called back and I said, now I know what is freedom. Uh, I'm in Amsterdam, and this is a really a place where you breathe freedom. This was what I sensed, you know, which is not the same, frankly, when you come lately. It's a bit different. If you a come different here, breath. It's a different air. It's and different I atmosphere. suffered from asthma, so I'm good in in breath in 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 knowing the different degrees of breathing. So. But at that time, I, and it was, it was, I don't know, the seventh of, or eighth country I was coming, mm -hmm. I was visiting, and this was a huge, huge difference, you know. And I always remember these uh, uh, different colors of skin of people melting uh, together in the, with the bicycles, the atmosphere, the families with kids, these huge windows with no curtains. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, amazing, you know, you could just look inside and, you know. And in your but, opinion? Uh, it doesn't feel like this anymore. Netherlands. Exactly, that's what I was going to ask. In your opinion, what changed? I don't know. This is up to you to, to, to find out. I, <laughs> I have difficulties to find out what, what has to change yet in Albania, I imagine, in the Netherlands, you know. It's, it's not my thing. <laughs> no, but you're saying it, it's less free, the atmosphere. Would you? No, the breathing, the the lungs tell me uh -huh. something is not as it was. Okay. But my lungs don't tell more than that. Okay. Because I'm politician, as you said, you know. <laughs> That's um, uh, 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 that was just a sidestep, but it would be interesting to to know from somebody who has been coming over the years and ap appreciates our freedom and you know, what changed. But let's leave it at that. And. Um, um, I'm not saying you are not a free country. Don't uh, don't no, misunderstand no, no, me. You know? No, of course. You are you still still a role model in many ways. And then I I had the privilege to know more about this country because as a mayor, I I came in Rotterdam in the Berlaga Institute and I got to know some of your great talents, Vinnie Maas and Francine Huben and others, and uh, then they got involved in Albania. I, uh, we had uh, some interaction with, uh, with the city planning uh, department of Amsterdam, and really this country is, uh, is a masterpiece, it's something amazing, you know, and uh, just I was happy to, to see someone here that I met only a month ago or so from Royal Hasconig and uh, uh, you know the, the 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 mastery of this country is something you know amazing something wonderful uh, you know you have you have here masters that uh, reminds me of the renaissance masters in terms of how they they possess uh, their 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 craftsmanship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, um, if you now you're Getting a little bit older, you're experienced in life. A little bit, and, yes. And you, if you would look at it again, at those two careers, um, one in art or one in polit politics, what would you, because you just said, well, I'm a little bit infected maybe by a politician, I hope I'm still not a politician. What would you, looking back, what would you prefer being or being called? No, I, it's not about what I prefer. I'm sure that I am the best artist among prime ministers. Mm -hmm. 
as enough. I am absolutely Fair sure enough. that I am the best prime minister among artists. So uh, <laughs> at least in that, I am the number one in the world. Is that okay, important? So to be the number one, one in the world. Exactly. One way or the other, you, you like to be number one, no? Uh -huh. One way or the other. So yeah. even if you are the only one, being number one is still number one. Okay? Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like this guy that, wa that won a marathon with nobody else. He was the first to arrive. So. Yeah, the Greek soldier who ran from marathon to Athens. Yeah. You have many, yeah. Yeah. You have many, <laughs> many occasions like that. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I think, I think, it's it's connected with uh, with uh, uh, how our life happens. Uh, Mm -hmm. We, uh, you, you, mm -hmm. you said, you said very kindly that I'm a little bit older. I think uh, it's it's right, you know, a little bit. Although when I started all this journey, I had all my hairs; they were all black. My teeth were natural, which is not the case anymore. Sorry to share some intimate parts of my body <laughs> with you, uh, and uh, and. Uh, when I when we got out of communism, I was 26, so uh, half half of uh, less a bit less than half now, but let's say half, and then uh, another half in in this uh, space of freedom, trying to build uh, a democratic uh, a democratic country with many others. Of course, it's quite a journey. And uh, it couldn't be different. I think. But I would not say that it's a good thing that artists do politics necessarily, because it can be also a very bad thing. Uh, but it is how it happened to me. So it's not something to generalize. It's simply my life. Yeah. And I would not change it, frankly. No. No. I would not change it by, I would not like to be nor mayor, either prime minister in this country, for example. It's good to be in Albania. I understand. Um, let's. We found uh, we're still talking about art, politics, starting start of your political career. Let's have a, a look at. We found an, uh, uh, a fragment. We were pointed out by a Dutch film director Eline Philipsen about a documentary she made about you, and we, I thought it might be nice to look at yourself um, when I was a little younger. Yeah. Yeah. When you were a little young. <laughs> and listen to you. I hope we can, yeah. C'était complètement imprévu. J'étais en France. Je faisais mon travail, la peinture. Et en fait, je ne voulais pas retourner en Albanie. Je suis rentré juste pour une semaine à cause de la mort de mon père. Et c'était exactement Quelques heures après les funérailles, quand j'ai reçu ce coup de fil du Premier ministre, parce que en fait c'était juste le moment où il y, a, il y avait un remaniement du gouvernement, et j'écoute de l'autre côté quelqu'un qui dit « Monsieur le ministre de la Culture, vous restez ou vous partez ?» Alors j'ai compris et j'ai dit « Je reste » comme ça. Il m'a dit, est-ce que vous avez besoin de réfléchir Je dis non, parce que si je réfléchis, je dirais, je dirais non. Comme ça, j'ai dû vivre avec ce, cette réponse complètement instinctive pendant les années après. Voilà. Qu Qu'est-ce qu que ça veut dire, le, être ministre de culture en Albanie Oh, ça, ça veut dire tout et rien dans le même temps. C'est... C'est très difficile, c'est une bataille très difficile. Je crois que le plus grand obstacle, c'est la classe politique albanaise. C'est les, les gens qui cherchent de gagner leur pain quotidien à travers la politique et qui, dans la plupart, sont des, des personnages éduqué et préparé pour gérer autre chose, pas la démocratie. Et alors, euh, sans faire un procès aux intentions, il faut dire que c'est vraiment très, très, très dur de 
porter des choses nouvelles, d'ouvrir de, des fenêtres dans ce grand château kafkaïen qui, qui, qui c'est l'Albanie. The film um, won a promising young man. Sorry, a promising young man, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would say so as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, and uh, um, and with hindsight, now we know that he was promising because he became prime minister. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he the the way of choosing his words in French. I mean, to a Dutchman, that's very impressive. The, the, you're French. Uh, we are not that good in French. Um, uh, most of us. And you um, you still speak in the same sort of well versed and and um, um, well um, temporized voice. Um, so you didn't change that much, I would say. Um, the film won uh, the Prix d'Europe in Berlin and screened in international fi film festivals. The greatest obstacle for Albania is the political elite, you're saying, 20 years ago. Now you have become the political elite. Is that still true? Is it, oh, because you just mentioned when I started talking to you about being an artist, you said, yeah, I, I hope I'm still not a politician. But Listen, I, I was younger and, uh, and uh, for sure I, I knew less, uh, although I don't think that uh, what I said is uh, something insane. No. But what I learned with time mm -hmm. uh, is that communism uh, was uh, was something like uh, nuclear nuclear radiation, mm -hmm. which uh, doesn't end when it ends uh, the explosion. Yeah, there's still there's meaning. Still, yeah. Communism did a lot of uh, a lot of uh, bad things, and we are not here to count them. But one of the things that uh, communism uh, did, uh, which we continue today to uh, have to deal with, uh, is killing completely the idea of the other. Mm -hmm. So the other did not exist. And every form of appearance of the other was, an, uh, was a form of aggression towards us, uh, meaning, uh, meaning uh, the communist uh, country, the communist people, the communist nation. And so uh, the, the idea of uh, the other that could be there, that can be there, have another opinion and mm -hmm. uh, be your opponent was completely replaced by the idea of the enemy. To be killed, to be eliminated, to be disgraced publicly. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we didn't yet, uh, we, we haven't yet come out of this. So our political life uh, is very much yet under this spell. There is no gracious way to disagree. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is no uh, way to, to you know, because at the end, even in in a family, I think, in every in every community, from a family to a, to an enterprise to a party to a nation, it's not about uh, uh, satisfaction. It's not about how much we agree with each other, but it's mostly in which way we disagree with each other. So the level, the, the, the quality of exchange during a disagreement defines a lot the quality of your life. If you disagree graciously, your life has a good quality. If you disagree aggressively, brutally, uh, you know, uh, insanely, mm -hmm. your life is a hell. Mm -hmm. So we are not in the ninth circle of hell as we were in the very beginning of this journey after the fall of communism, but we are still in hell. We haven't crossed hell in terms of uh, having a public space where we disagree, but we don't forget that we are, we are 
humans. We are people. We are parents. We are uh, sons and daughters of other parents. We, are, we have our own families. So we have many things in common. And uh, we forget all this. And the disagreement goes to the point that is just a cold war. There is no and the pro, and the and the old way communists used to destroy uh, enemies, what they called internal enemies, included also killings. Mm -hmm. There is no more killings, thank God, but there is still a lot of uh, character assassination. And this is uh, this is not just the political class. This is uh, the society, and. Uh, and with the, with the curse of the social networks, this, this uh, uh, disease uh, couldn't be cured uh, enough, mm -hmm. but now is even more spread in a different way, of course. Yeah, because you're saying um, in that fragment, and that you're saying uh, they were raised. Um, had what I what I also learned in these years is to avoid to answer directly to a question by misleading the 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 one that is asking me to the point that he forgets what he asked me. And you just succeeded. This in is that? what I learned also. You, and you, you know? just succeeded in that with this conversation. I think so because I saw a bit. You were a bit lost. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, um, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I was taking a mental note about uh, things I was going to um, ask you later on, and we will, we will. But I, so you're saying we are, um, uh, we have our social network, sort of our social, uh, the way we communicate, the way we disagree and, uh, with each other, has been destroyed for a large part by uh, decades of communist rule. No, we had it before. Uh, because of communism and after because of communism, but now we are all in all of us in this. So mm -hmm. even countries like yours, with a completely different level of democracy, different level of uh, uh, of uh, let's say uh, ethics in communication, mm -hmm. are in trouble yeah. because of these uh, social networks and because of this freedom of reach, equaling the freedom of speech. And uh, because of so much, so much insanity, uh, getting traction through the through the freedom of reach, and because mm -hmm. of the human nature being uh, being uh, attracted through its own most dark side, mm -hmm. wanting scandals, wanting lies, wanting uh, gossip, wanting. Uh, you know, sensational mm -hmm. uh, news or sensational uh, information that most of the time is cooked and, uh, and sometimes can be the horror of nations. And that makes it difficult for political elites to rule? Is that no, what you're trying to... No, it's not about, it's not about ruling. It's about, it's about, the, it, it, it's about the, the, the health of, 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 of the organism of societies, you know. Uh, we were talking before. I, I'll never. I, I always remember this 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 uh, episode of my life, when uh, one of the most famous uh, American journalists, Jane Kramer, came to Albania to to make a portrait of mine for New Yorker, and mm -hmm. she stayed a week, and she met many people, and uh, we had long conversation and so on. And before leaving, she said to me, Eddie, uh, I'm sorry, you have to go through a not really very pleasant process, which we call fact-checking. OK, I never heard about fact-checking at that time. So uh, she left, and then the Department of Fact-Checking in New Yorkers uh, started to send emails to me, to everyone that was mentioned. Mm -hmm. I remember I've mentioned that when I met, uh, or in an occasion with my girlfriend, she was dressed in red. And they wanted confirmation for her if she was really dressed in red, or, if he, or at least if she felt OK with this uh, statement. So it was insane. And so I write to her and I say, Jane, what is this? You know, KGB in front of this is a joke. And she said, Daddy, I know, but it should be a reason why we never lost the court case. So now, going from this super 
standard of respect for your readers yeah. to the, to the uh, mambo jumbo uh, media online and to the social networks is really not going to a new high, no? It's a very new law. I'll because say. you can say basically any lie you want on the internet and it's not checked. No, but be, it, it, it's, it's not just personal, you know. Personal also can be very painful. But, you know, when you, w one of the good things or bad things, I don't know, I have to check when I leave this, uh, this job uh, how much damaged or deranged I am from politics. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the good things of this is that your skin gets impenetrable. You, 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 you understand that you have to live with it and uh, that this is just part of I don't. I don't thing. really believe you that you have such a thick skin because, because the way you're... But I, at least I have to say it, you know? So, but I can say, to, no, but I can say there, there, there are different grades, you know? Okay, maybe, maybe you're right. You, you, it gets you, to you the way you talk about it. Uh, no, it gets to me a lot because not because of me personally but because mm -hmm. of uh, of my family uh, right. mm -hmm. because of my my looking you know looking at your mother that is unable anymore to adopt because she now passed away god bless her but uh, because she's already in an age that she cannot adopt mm -hmm. to going to a new law and looking to her suffering, looking to your wife suffering, looking to your kids suffering, looking to yeah. others, to others suffering, not to your collaborators, but to their families suffering mm -hmm. because of, you know, it's not a nice, it's not a nice thing. But beyond that, looking how, uh, how uh, countries are, are, are penetrated, are, are put in a, in a, in a situation that is embarrassing, United States of America being put in a situation to to have to question its own elections because of this it's something embarrassing so it's, it's but now that you entered uh, this part of the conversation because my questioning no I didn't enter you brought me in this part of the conversation yeah. but um, I was asking you about the political elites and then we went on to the press and then uh, now he remembered what was the what was yeah but there, there are several things <laughs> of course which which stem from, from, from one no. but one of them is of course that uh, that um, uh, Albania went to the 103rd place in the ranking of free press in uh, uh, internationally and this is this report of um, uh, um, 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 reporters without borders and um, and um, you could explain uh, maybe what you were saying in that light that Albania, maybe you, is not too happy about uh, free press. Listen, I have lost the count in which place we are, frankly. Mm -hmm. You know, we go up, we go down, but um, I'm sorry to say I realize that this is, uh, this is very questionable, you know, because uh, I don't want to mention here countries, but I know countries where where leaders check the headlines in the evening and then in the day after they check if the headlines were properly uh, properly uh, published mm -hmm. and uh, you know and i don't think that uh, this is uh, this is a secret is a mystery uh, which makes a certain impression when you see that nothing like that happens uh, in albania and uh, you know so I'm criticized for something that I cannot really, I try, I try hard. I changed a lot in this because I, I wanted to give, to give a, uh, you know, to, to, to respect the critics, but I come from the free media. I risked my life for, for my freedom of speech, literally not, uh, and uh, I had to go through hell uh, mm -hmm. physically for being outspoken. And uh, sometimes I cannot really, uh, I don't really shut my mouth uh, up in front of uh, crazy, crazy uh, things that are the result of abuse of the freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. So, and this complicates things. But I can tell you one thing: you know, you need only to check three days the Albanian press, and then you realize that not only there is no. Uh, 
uh, censorship. Not only there is no pressure, not only there is nothing mm -hmm. of the sort, mm -hmm. but there is something very disturbing, which is uh, which is the full legitimacy of abusing with your freedom. Uh, in detriment of every single individual you want to attack. This is, anyhow, I, mm -hmm. I don't want to, to say that we are a heaven of freedom uh, because it, it, it is connected also to many other things like the, like the guarantees of the journalists and the ownership and the yeah. relation with owners and the boards and uh, all this. So in that regard, you know, we are not Netherlands. Uh, but on the other hand, there is no one case, one single case, that a journalist or a newspaper or a portal or a TV has had a single trouble Mm -hmm. Because of government pressure, Please, no. Otherwise, you know. And that's also because you're saying I truly know what it is if you're freedom of expression. I am not the person. I'm not the. I. I you know. I, I. My problem is that I. I. I am a fighter and I am a crazy fighter and I cannot uh, be quiet, especially. Uh, when I have to face idiotic, uh, you know, attitudes and mm -hmm. idiotic statements, I have to say my word. And I don't understand why the freedom uh, goes just for the journalist and not for a prime minister. I should okay. have my freedom to say things, yeah. right? Yeah. Then I realize that no, I have a limited freedom. But okay. you have and I'm, I'm now in my limited freedom. But here in Netherlands, I can be a bit more outspoken because you are... You are protected by Dutch government, so you, nobody can can say that you will be under pressure tomorrow because of me. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, uh. Absolutely. Um, okay. Um, let's try to delve a little bit into um, uh, 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 our Dutch responsibility and the process of. In 2013, I believe uh, Albania was uh, given uh, the status. 14. 14, yes, a, a year after you started um, your prime ministry, um, was a, um, a, a candidacy um, for the European Union. We are almost 10 years later. No, eight. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, eight. It's, no, because okay, we count every year. It's not yeah. like, I mean, it's okay. the year of life. You're absolutely, no. you're absolutely right. Let's be... <laughs> eight. Eight. 17 for Macedonia. And North Macedonia, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Macedonia recently changed north, its name north, because yeah. because some of its neighbors wanted them to change their name. Now some other neighbors want want them to change their history books about their history. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, then uh, you're tied together with North Macedonia to uh, open up negotiations with the Union. Yeah. I don't understand why actually the two republics. Next don't try to understand it. Why are, they, bring, why are you it tied together? Don't try to understand all of it because it complicates your life too much. Uh -huh. uh, you know. We are Balkans, okay, which comes with some with some troubles, uh, and then we want to to be part of the EU, mm -hmm. and then if countries like Bulgaria in this case use their EU uh, membership and EU veto mm -hmm. to discuss history. In political level, this is even more complicated. Yeah. And then, in general, I think every time history is put in the hands of politicians to to be sorted out, the most probable result is that there is more complicated history than before starting to deal with that. So all this. <laughs> Is a, is a disgrace. But it's a disgrace of the spirit of the enlargement. Because it's the crooked spirit of the enlargement. It's not Bulgaria. Bulgaria is just the most stunning example of this crooked spirit of enlargement. But it's the crooked spirit of enlargement, the trouble. And this is the way the European Union works. Uh, the mechanism that is obsolete need to change. It's impossible to go on like this. The the one country kidnapped another country or two other countries because of some 
issues that I don't I, I, I don't discuss. Maybe you know they have their right to to have their their preoccupation about their history, about their heroes, about. But in the Balkans, you know, if you enter there, it's crazy. It's full of history. It's yeah. crazy because, you know, if you ask Albanians, we think that we were the first in this planet after the monkeys, you know. <laughs> uh, we strongly believe that, uh, you know, the Darwinian evolution started with us. Mm -hmm. If you ask the Greeks, they think, you know, Netherlands is just uh, an old village of the ancient Greece. If you ask, uh, you know, Greeks even think that they were before the monkeys. Then the monkeys came, then the Greeks came back again. So if you ask the Serbs, my God, you know, if you ask the Serbs, you have to just <laughs> move in your chair because uh, you risk to be killed. So uh, it's, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. So how we sort it out? How we sort it out, you know, who is the older, who has the heroes, you know. If, you know, if, uh, if you ask us, Napoleon was Albanian, uh, his family went to Corsica, you know. So these are not things to, de to be dealt in the European level. No. Right? We mm -hmm. agree on that. But, this is, but it is what it is, as Donald Trump would say. But, um, okay, so let's not try to understand why you and Don't North, try, and, very and North good. Macedonia. Uh, but I can tell you this, that uh, the most ununderstandable point beyond that is that nor us and either North Macedonia are knocking at the door of European Union to become members. If it was to become members today, I would understand, you know, the concern. You know, two I, more, two more, really? It's not enough, 20, how much they are? So, no, we are simply asking to start accession talks. Mm -hmm. Because in a funny way, when you want to become a member of European Union, you become candidate first. But the only type of candidate that is not allowed to talk. So you become candidate to marry, but the other side says, you can marry me one day, but I don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. How you marry with someone you don't even talk? You need to open talks. So uh, we are candidates without talking. So now want, we want to talk. Now you want to open. Then talks will take another, I don't know, another, <laughs> I don't know how many years. But to, 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 but this is, a, this is a kidnapping, you know, for internal purposes, for elections here, elections there. Every time there is an election approaching to an important country, we know that we will be somehow uh, problematic immediately. You know, some mafia there, some criminals here, some Albanian-speaking uh, gangsters, uh, you know, uh, r making marijuana trees in the... In the southern part of in Albania, the southern yeah. part of uh, Rotterdam, yes. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this is, and then elections go. We suddenly have fought successfully, and we are ready to make the next step. But there are elections in other countries, so you have to wait. What what they have to say? So it's an internal process of keeping. It's more and more. Yeah, right. it's more and more. It's not anymore what you do. No. Okay. But because European Union has a body named European Commission you know, paid by all the European taxpayers, uh, the, the heaviest machine of bureaucracy in the world, I guess, with people working 24 hours seven to scrutinize every country, with delegations being in every country, uh, and really going after facts, really going after. And then they produce reports for the member states to say this country has fulfilled this, this, and that. But it's not enough. And we had some it interesting look, stories looks, with Netherlands. It looks like it's never enough. With Netherlands, we had uh, interesting stories that show that, you know, there is something that doesn't really work uh, in the right way. Because they didn't like the report of the commission. They found it too complacent. What too, they, too friendly, actually. Too friendly, yes. Mm -hmm. And what they did, they sent a fact-finding fact -finding mission of some MPs coming in the morning and leaving in the afternoon. If, uh, you know, the Balkans are a strange creature, you know, more you know, less you know. 
Imagine now you come in the morning and in the afternoon you have found all the facts that the others didn't find working 24 hours 7 for years. And I am in front of these guys. And one of them, who, is, who was a rapporteur, I think, or co-rapporteur, whatever, in Albania, asked me, Mr. Prime Minister, how you think to harmonize Sharia law with Aki Communautaire? And I look at him and I say, this is just an intellectual curiosity or you, you have something to say about Albania? He said, no, 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 Sharia law. You are a Muslim country. I said, sir, we don't have to think about it because we never had Sharia law. We are not a Muslim country. We are a European country with Muslims and Christians. And we are a role model of religious fraternity, which is not said by me, but by Pope Francis. And the guy comes back here and writes an op-ed where he repeats that the problem with Albania is Sharia law. So is he an idiot? I guarantee you he is not. I'm not giving you names. Mm -hmm. He is a very intelligent man. I think I read And I don't say it, uh, he is really an intelligent man. He is really the type of great politician I want never to be. But he does it because he needs it for purposes here. I don't know. To tell people, I don't know. What, you know. And so you are trapped in this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. but, all, but all this being said, I want also to, to add one thing that. Netherlands has this, uh, has this um, strict and fair mantra. We are strict, but we are fair. I have to tell you that Netherlands exercised so much pressure on us that we thought was totally unfair, but it helped us to be better, in a sense, kind of to revenge through doing more. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the end, our country has improved a lot. I think we had to open accession talks since years now. Maybe we'll open them next, maybe not. When but we are not going to lose the sleep because of that anymore. We need to do our job and to do it right. And then when they'll be ready, they'll be ready. When they'll not be ready, because we were organizing weddings, big weddings, music, great meals, all the country attending the bride coming from Brussels. The Brussels uh, bride never showed up. Mm -hmm. One year, two years, three years, and then we said, no, no more organization. If, they, if she wants to come to marry us directly in the bed with no meal, with no music, and we have happy children, so uh, this is this, you know I'm, seriously you know I say it in a maybe in a in a relaxed way, but uh, it's not so relaxing. No, you know, believe me, believe me. Imagine yourself no. trying to marry with someone you are deeply in love, and who tells you, yeah, 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 we'll marry, and you organize everything, and uh, she doesn't show up, mm -hmm. but not once, more than once. Imagine. I think I read the opinion article. Um, it's a Dutch parliamentarian, yeah, yeah, um, uh, uh, and it's it's important to actually to point out that uh, the 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 uh, law in that that the, the, the Albanian state is absolutely as secure as any other <laughs> European state. Which law? We have more European laws than you. You know why? Because when you make a law, we have experts from European Union. And they tell us to do everything that sometimes they cannot do in your countries. So in ter if you go to the library of the parliament, our laws are much more European than uh, many European countries. Yeah, but because even you know, uh, we try to do a law on media, to, to try to regulate this online media. And we took the German version. And they told us, German version? But it's not a democratic law. But they cannot tell it to Germany. To us, they can tell. <laughs> so uh, we had a conversation with some experts for some, some other stuff. And they said to us, you need to do a law 
on that precise part of the whole architecture of this sector. We said to them, can you show us who has it? No, nobody has it because they didn't have the guts to do it. So, you know, it's, uh, we, we are also a place where frustrations from not having uh, a way till the, till the end in the legal process here are there are easier, you know, so we do. No, but that's that's but that's one of there is but but, but okay. problem is not the laws we have. The problem is the implementation. So the difference is that in Netherlands you maybe uh, have more let's say uh, more difficulty to change a law, but laws are implemented as they are written. But this process has been going on for eight years and even more even more actually because uh, the first uh, talks about um, uh, uh, Albanian membership of the Union were even in the start of the century. Um, and then you became a, can a, a candidate for membership in 2014. And um, the thing which comes to mind to me um, is that the Union is uh, damaging uh, the states and countries next to it by prolonging and pro prolonging, procrastinating and procrastinating, and actually it does damage to the countries around it by a process which is, seems to be never ending. Although, last week, Bulgaria finally dropped its problems with Macedonia, with North Macedonia, maybe we should say. So do you actually hope that this long process, which I can I can easily say as a Dutchman that I think is a disgrace, but um, uh, you, you you might not be able to do as a prime minister of a candidate. No, no, but I, I say it's it a disgrace. Know. But would you would you think that by the autumn, and tomorrow you're meeting our prime minister, Mr. Rutte, and here's an older picture of it. Would they? I mean, the Dutch were one of the countries which put their uh, um, because of the uh, because of the. The problems the Dutch had with enlargement, uh, you were still waiting to open up chapter one <laughs> in negotiations. I would not, uh, I would not put it so simply. Uh, Maybe not only the Dutch, but I would not put no. I would not put it so simply. Not because the Dutch didn't really uh, squeeze us, but because uh, uh, I, I think. Uh, the Dutch are also very coherent, so they are mean, but they are coherent. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said, the the, the process, the squeeze, mm -hmm. has produced a good effect. Okay, that's very gracious of you. Which to say, is a consolation mm -hmm. for us. Now, uh, the thing with Europe, in my view, is that. As it is, it cannot work. It's very simple. Yeah, you said so before. And is that, is that cannot work. Is that it's not working. It cannot work because there is n there is no ground f to be to be strategic first and to have to have uh, leadership second in the world. I mean, and third to uh, be able to have a decision-making process that is not a combination of all the vested interests of all the participants. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, so knowing this, I also know, and we also should know, that enlargement will not happen in a reasonable uh, time. And by reasonable time, I mean our lifetime. So as it is, as it is, I, I, I repeat. So I strongly believe that we need to go in the direction of the French president's proposal Macron's by proposal. developing it, because it's, uh, it's very French for the moment, need to be developed, but uh, by developing it and by creating the conditions that the countries of the Western Balkans uh, are able to participate in first the whole political process of Europe. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Second, 
the countries of the Western Balkans are able to uh, participate in all efforts vis-a-vis -vis security, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, climate change, vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis crisis like the Ukrainian pandemic or, yeah. or like the energy crisis or like crises that af affect everyone and not be in the middle of Europe and look how European Union distribute vaccines for its own nurses and doctors and elderly people and have no single vaccine to distribute in so our own instance, countries. Albania or so Bosnia. they say that we should not let Western Balkan be the place where China, Russia, Turkey have their influence. But guess what? When there is a challenge of day of the, of, uh, of uh, life or death, mm -hmm. like the pandemic, they put us in the condition to have to run to China, to Russia, to Turkey. If it was not Turkey, Albanians would have had multiple fatali uh, fatalities more mm -hmm. because EU let us like fish uh, out of the water. So university network, university network is a very important tool that Europe has created for, for, for its youth. How possibly the youth in the Western Balkans can be left out of it? And why we have to wait for the enlargement process to be accomplished to be part of the university networks? Why the Albanian farmers have to wait the enlargement to be accomplished to be part of the whole process of uh, getting supported in situations like this one where we have a war and where we are part of it and where we fight in the same trench with uh, all our European Union friends. We align 100% with uh, the EU foreign policy. So are, you, are you saying... Refugee crisis, you know, I, I hope we'll not have another one, but I, I doubt, I doubt that we'll, we'll uh, uh, not see it coming. Then what happens? Refugees come from Turkey, enter EU, through Greece, get out of EU to North Macedonia, Serbia, or Albania, Montenegro, re-enter EU through Croatia or Hungary, and you know this is not sustainable. But are, you, not sustainable. Are, are, are you saying um, uh, um, the way the European Union works at this moment with with uh, um, not even majority, but it's all uh, everybody has to agree on every single enlargement or on every single major. Have you ever seen are a family? You, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you saying? Have you ever seen a family us, working part? well mm -hmm. if grandparents, parents, kids, grandkids have the same say in the table? So you would, and and everyone says we should go this direction, and then a grandkid says, no, 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 I don't think so. So you would agree with Macron that we need to have majority decision making but in Europe. In this is not only Macron. There are many, many mm -hmm. countries that uh, are thinking about it. But I would, I would go further. Mm -hmm. I would say in parallel, I'm not talking about substituting the enlargement. Enlargement, I don't know, will happen one day. Will happen one day. God bless them who will be alive then. But in the meantime, we have to be integrated Into as Europeans. We are yeah. not, we are not part of the union, but we are Europeans, and, and it cannot be decided in Hague or in Brussels or in Paris. This has been decided by the almighty God that thought that the most strange people like Albanians, Serbs, Macedonians, uh, you know, uh, Bosnians have to be in the middle of Europe. Mm -hmm. So you want or you don't want, we are in the umbilicus of Europe. And the European Union is the only geographical reality, in my knowledge, in history, with one outside border and with one inside border. Imagine yourself having the stomach outside the border of your orga organism. It doesn't work. You, you will have infections. You cannot, you cannot walk with your stomach in your pocket. Stomach should be in your place. So, uh, so you're, you're, you're saying, and is that what you're going to, to, to tell our prime minister as well tomorrow? No, no, I'm not, I don't need to tell him. He knows. You're, you're saying in, integrate us into uh, university networks, into uh, agricultural uh, practices, into... So first, in of all, first of all, in all political levels, mm -hmm. I believe that 
in the leadership level, in the ministerial level, in the Euro Parliament level, mm -hmm. we have to be there without the right of vote. But we have to be there. To we be have consulted, to, to, participate heard, to participate in the, yeah. in the political life of Europe. Mm -hmm. Because then, you know, we uh, can serve Europe better and Europe will have one headache less. Mm -hmm. It's more and more the case that the European Union needs us as much as we need the European Union. And you're pleading for uh, uh, um, the Balkans, for South Eastern Europe as a whole. Eh? You're saying, uh, let us in, eh? let the, the Western Balkans, let the Balkans, let the South, South Eastern Europe in. But um, like you just said, pointed out rightly before, um, there's so many differences between the countries surrounding you. Uh, there's, of course, Serbia, which has a strong connection to Russia. There's Bosnia, which is a different, a different place. So, so yes, and so three, this three different republics yes, in one true, republic. So, true. And so, so, Serbia, is it going anywhere? Does we do we have a chance that Serbia will will take one day an airplane and will fly somewhere? No, Serbia is there to stay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Bosnia is there to stay. Everyone is there to stay. Yeah. Now, the question is very simple. This complexity, we, you are right. Serbia has a different history, has a different tradition, has a different relation with Russia. We have a totally different history, but we are there. Now, the question is very simple. We need Serbia on our side, on we, or we leave Serbia go on the other side. Very simple. We, you need, we need to see the Ukraine conflict spread or war spread and come to the Balkans, you think that's which possible? is the most vulnerable chain. Of course it's possible. It's possible? Of course it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's as possible as it was not before it happened, the Ukrainian thing. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's about it's about a new time we are living. So my conviction is that we need to understand the other and to work with the other and to find out what we have in common and not, be, not behave like in the totalitarian regime that everyone should think the same, everyone should have the same history, everyone should have the same uh, thinking about history. Meaning pressuring Serbia beyond a certain level of reason to sanction Russia is not a good idea this is because it can create a crack that then can have irreparable consequences in the region. This is we have we have with Serbia we have a, a big open issue which is Kosovo. Okay, yeah. I I am in uh, in a very uh, good terms with the Serbian president. Uh, and uh, we have agreed to disagree on that. Yeah, there are many Albanian. We have agreed to disagree on that. There are many Albanians that think I'm a traitor. Uh, but okay, I'm I'm a traitor. I'm a traitor. What what can I do? Because you want I a good relationship with your neighbor. They call no, you a but no, because history, you know, always. But we have to learn from what the wisest and what the what the 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 most successful people and countries did dealing with their history. Mm -hmm. Look what happened between Germany and France. Mm -hmm. This was a crazy, mm -hmm. crazy long, long, long conflict. And if they are where they are, it's because some, some people, in a certain mm -hmm. moment of time, they realized that, you know, they had to change page. Yeah, yeah. But in the same time, the, ch the full change of page came in 1970, when Willy Brandt, made the famous genuflection in Poland. But from 1945 to 1970, so many things happened. The steel and the coal community, and this and that and that. So we need to engage. And uh, this is what I advocate for the Balkans. We need to engage. And we have come out with this idea of the open Balkans, which is exactly reviving the spirit of the European Union in our region, with the four freedoms of Europe in our region, freedom mm -hmm. of movement of people, of goods, of capitals, of service, so more people work, more people interact, more people deal with their economy, with their prosperity, with their future, less they think about their heroes uh, having, uh, having killed each other. So this is the thing. 
uh, and I am on that side of the of the of the table, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but aren't you? Um, it's a, but 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 the point you made is very important. It's a very complex and vulnerable region. We need to to keep it together, and we need to do everything to tie it as much as possible to the European Union. And that's why I believe in this political community as, an, as a general idea. Then the articulation need to be, to be thought and need to be developed, but we should not lose time. We should not lose time. Um, uh, I think uh, you're absolutely right about it. We've seen how, how time quickens when there's a war going on. There's a protracted, pro pro protracted war, and probably it's going to stay there for a while uh, in the eastern part of Europe. Is that... Um, in a weird way, an opportunity for southeastern Europe, for the Balkans to step closer to the Union? Now, you know, being in the Netherlands and being asked this from a, from a Dutch mm -hmm. is tricky because you are the most, uh, the, the, the best place people on earth to find out opportunities from from mess. Mm -hmm. So you have always been good in creating opportunities from where everyone else thought it was a disaster, you created a new opportunity, uh, which, is, which is fantastic, by the way. And we have to ask you what to do in that case. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm very, very happy to, to be able to meet tomorrow, Mark. Uh, I, uh, I, I know that... Uh, uh, there are many people, because the, this is a very, it's a very articulated democracy with 20 and more parties in parliament. So I'm sure that many people do not agree with me, but uh, he, is, uh, he is a bless, at least for the European Union and for the tables of uh, European Council and NATO, where I Meet him. witness. Yeah. This man is a bless. Why would you say so? His level of brilliance and uh, his capacity of uh, synthesis is amazing in the international level. I see already some people here hating him and smile and laughing, but... Uh, no, but I, they are not there. You're at the same time. I, so I don't change my mind. This is, uh, this is what I'm saying. And in this case, it's important to, to, to continue to communicate with, with him and with the Dutch government to see how much Netherlands can contribute in this uh, idea of giving a new push to the integration of Europe by not necessarily sticking only on this enlargement thing in, and by not necessarily leaving the countries only on this individual uh, process. Individual process is fine. It will not change, strict and fair, all the rest, ages, it's fine. We have to, do, to go through it, because it's the only way to build in our countries functioning democracies, institutions, and all, all the rest. But in the meantime, again, we are Europeans. We are as Europeans as everyone else. To not say we are more, but I'm not going to say it to you. So we need to be part of Europe, in part of the political Europe, part of the all structures in Europe that deal with uh, everything that goes beyond Europe's European Union's border, from big crises to, to climate change, to young people, to security. This is very, very important. Actually, I, I would say you're more European probably than a lot of other states. I just read Noel Malcolm's Agents of Empire, and I don't think there's um, hardly any other country to be found in Europe, which has such a European history as uh, Albania. But that's my point of view. <laughs> and maybe not your point of view. I thought it was an, an amazing book about the history it, of Europe listen, and Albania's I, part in uh, it. But, but uh, let's not I'm discuss... Tell you, don't bring me in, in, in history <laughs> stuff, because uh, I'm not good at that. But I can, I can advise you Albanians who can, you can bring here to make interviews. And to realize that you are not European, man. You are just a exactly. second-hand person. Um, but and the real Europeans are there in Albania. But leave, so. leave that uh, beside, beside, leave that uh, there. But um, uh, actually, I can recommend that book to anybody who's interested in the history of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Albania and its surroundings. But um, 
But entering European Union, I, um, I mean, by preparing this interview, I came across some statistics about the percentage of Albanians working abroad, which is a huge percentage, and of the percentage of Albanians wanting to go abroad if they had uh, the possibility or the chance or contemplating it. Aren't you afraid that by the time you do open up uh, a, a few of that, hardly anybody will be there? No, I'm not. I'm not because history can can tell us how it goes and uh, this is the face of history that other countries have go have got to go through before mm -hmm. today one of the most excelling countries in our continent is norway just go back in history and look that the norwegians were were leaving and were, uh, you know, abandoning their, their, their lands out of extreme misery mm -hmm. and look where they are today. So these are, this is part of, of, of entering in the European history and in the free world history with a certain delay, I might say. For 500 years, we didn't choose where to stay. Others imposed us to say under different roofs, uh, empires, regimes that were, were really not uh, our choice. This is the first time we choose to be part of Europe and European Union, and uh, this is a religion for us. So, but of course this comes also with its challenges. Of course, you know, how to tell to a 20 years old kid in a remote area in Albania that you have to wait here because in 20 years will be like Germany. Mm -hmm. Germany is one hour and a half away. So the temptation is very strong and I don't know any country that has not gone through it once after then having to recover from it next. So I'm not really worried about it. What I'm worried is how much European Union will contribute or not for us going forward faster. This is the only worry. And not by uh, simply including us in as members, but by creating a new mechanics of work. Because this, what is happening is really, is really uh, disgusting sometimes. You know, this Bulgarian affair is really uh, crazy, you know, and uh, things like that, you know, in the middle of a war, just imagine this, in the middle of a war, uh, that is a hot war at the border of Europe, Euro European Union, a European Union and NATO country kidnaps two other NATO countries for history. I am not questioning their, their uh, uh, their uh, motives. Maybe they, they have their motives, and I'm not questioning. But the way to, to solve it is, is, is terrible, you know. Mm. It's terrible. And in the Balkans, our main problem is that we produce more history than we can digest. <laughs> so uh, that's why I avoid always history, because more, more, more you talk about history, more you produce history, more you create conflicts, more you are in undigestion, you know. And then it's not Europe's fault. It's our problem. Thank you. I want to thank you very, very much. I think it's impressive. It's really impressive that uh, a, prime, a serving prime minister of a country which is in a very uh, important moment in its history agrees to come here. No quest No, we did not put you any of the questions in front of you. I think there's a, an shining example of the whole idea of open society and democracy. It's amazing how you agree to answer to all sorts of questions. Write a nice letter to these guys that make the ranking of media, because this may help. <laughs> and, um, and that's what, um, among um, uh, um, one of the reasons why I might say this in public. I mean, uh, 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 it's exceptional, it's extraordinary. Uh, I hope uh, you have a good day tomorrow. I hope, uh, as a Dutchman, I can uh, only repeat the words of the uh, Desi uh, from Bulgaria, that I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed that we 
uh, put our neighbors into a process in which uh, their mood and their uh, uh, and the whole society is affected by the way we, 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 we pro procrastinate and procrastinate. It's unwise. Uh, we're living in a moment of history in which you know, we need to act, and I don't think we can allow ourselves another 10, 20, 30 years of, uh, of uh, uh, negotiations and all of that. And I think it's amazing how you talk about the value of an open society in Europe, like uh, Madame Tikhanovskaya did in the same spot you're in here now, like Vasil Kirepanem did from Kiev, like Madame Nemtsova did, the, the daughter of Boris Nemtsov, here in the same place. Uh, I think it's very telling that the real spirit of Europe is brought to us Europeans uh, by people who uh, know what it is to uh, value freedom, rule of law and democracy. Thank you very, very much for coming here and I hope you have a good day tomorrow, Mr. Thank President. you, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>